Good morning, friends. Today is going to be a fun day. We just got our beef order. I just picked it up this morning. I got a whole beef done. It hung for 10 days and then they butchered it. It was 900, I believe 952 pounds live weight. So this is going to be a great video if you want to know how much meat you get if you have around a thousand pound cow butchered. So I hope you stick around. We're going to go over the, um, the cuts that I got, how much it was total, and also we're going to be organizing my deep freeze. I just cleaned it out so it is nice and empty and ready for the cow. So let's get started. All right, so let's get into the fun stuff, the whole reason that you wanted this video. I have, it's roughly 16 cubic feet. It is really old. I do not know the exact measurements. They are not on there. And I deep cleaned it last week, so I looked. But I have a five cubic foot freezer, and so I'm going to say it's roughly about 15, 16 cubic feet. It fit everything, plus there's a little room, so I'm, I'm happy. Now, I then realized I forgot to take inventory, so I could be one or two packages off, but I did go through it again, so, so I have some pretty good numbers on what you're going to get if you get around a thousand pound beef cow butchered. Now, I have a different video that goes into the whole process of finding a farm, finding a butcher, finding a cow, going through cuts, all the, you know, live weight versus hanging weight versus packaged weight and all that garb. It is an older video. It is not excellent quality at all, but it has a lot of good information. So if you want to know more of that side, I suggest going and looking at that video. If you have any questions, leave them down either in this comment section, that video's comment section, and I'll be more than happy to answer those. But this video is more on what you're going to get when it comes home with you, which of course is the most exciting part. And like I said, I have a good cut list of the amount you're going to get. Now, obviously, if your cow weighs more than mine or less than mine, then you're either going to have more meat or less meat. But I am right around a thousand pounds, so it's going to give you a really good visual and estimate on how much you're going to get. So uh, he was on pasture the entire time. His live weight was 932. And then I ended up getting 440 pounds total meat from him. That is going to be slightly different though, because I asked the butcher if anyone had recently had one butchered same type of meat. And do they have anything that they didn't want? And they didn't want the soup bones. So I ended up getting a whole extra thing of soup bones from another cow. So I now have double the amount because they didn't want any of their soup bones. So for my amount, so for my cow and the amount of meat I got, every piece averages 465 a pound, which you can't even find the off-brand 70, 30, whatever hamburger for $4.65 a pound right now in the store. So I have top quality pasture raised from a local farm and everything from my porterhouse steaks, my short ribs, my roast, my brisket, uh, my hamburger, all averages to $4.65 a pound. So if that doesn't get you wanting to buy a quarter, eighth, half whole beef. Of course, the more you buy, which I go in that in the other video, the more you buy, the cheaper it's gonna be. But let's go over the cuts. Now mine are gonna be a little different than what you may get because I have a bigger family and I'm accommodating for that plus leftovers, plus leftovers, so that uh, my husband has lunches the following day. Do that again. So each roast is a four pound roast. Each steak pack has four in it. So if I have, I have five T-bone steaks packs. So there's four in each of those packs. So I have 20 steaks. I had my brisket cut up so that it was in 
more manageable pieces because I want to do a couple different things with it. And my hamburger is in two pound packs. I love you too. My hamburger is in two pound packs. The first thing I got was the leaf fat and that oh, I highly recommend. I have videos on how to render your own beef tallow, not just from leaf fat, but also other fat if they give you that as well or if you have a brisket and you trim the fat cap off of that before you bake it you can render your own tallow from that however the leaf fat is going to give you the most odorless and whitest tallow versus the other fat not that that matters it's all going to be absolutely delicious tallow makes the best lotion i'm pretty sure i have a video on that and it also makes the best fried chicken the best pie crust <laughs> it is amazing i absolutely love having it on my shelf and like i said i have videos on how to do it how to use it look it up it's awesome i'll try to leave a couple of them linked up here so i got that at the flank steak the skirt steak which they cut that into two pieces the hanger steak I got the oxtail, which, guys, if you have ever made oxtail stew, you need to. If I don't have a video, I will make one just to show you how delicious this stuff is. It is so good. You can, of course, use the oxtail for soup bones to make a beef bone broth. However, don't make stew. It's so good. It's so good. So I got one pack of that. I, of course, got all of the soup bones, which could be labeled different ways. This actually has them labeled uh, broth bones, soup bones, and dog bones, all of which are perfectly good to make your um, bone broth. They're good to make, like, to throw in soups. A lot of them have, like, for the, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, uh, shanks the bone shanks for like osobuco i know i pronounced that wrong but dishes like that to where it's it's just it's so it's so good so i got all those i have about 40 packs so that's with the other added so probably 20 ish packs uh for one cow I have eight packs of short ribs, which I'm going to assume are about four pounds a piece, three to four pounds a piece, going off of the weight of them and the weight of my roast. So I have eight packs of those. I have six packs of boneless ribeye, uh, six packs of boneless sirloin, and then I have two packs of porterhouse steaks which one is getting used today you could of course go a different route and get new york strips and filet and do that if you wanted you can do it however you want we wanted porterhouse so we have a porterhouse that we are having for dinner tonight and then we will have another pack in there for a later date so we have that we have five t-bone steaks packs so 20 T-bones. My brisket was cut into four pieces. So each piece is a couple pounds, few pounds. We're doing two for Easter dinner. Actually, we're going to uh, smoke it on the grill. And then I'll have two that I can do whatever with at a later date. And then we have four arm roasts, eight chuck roasts, two sirloin tip roasts, two rolled rump roasts, which I'm going to try to make my own roast beef. I know that may sound stupid because you make roast all the time. However, I want to do like where it's like medium rare, medium, and you like thinly slice it and it's all, you know, you know what I mean? I want to do it just once. I've never done it. So I have two rolled rump roasts. I have nine packs of liver, which I don't know if that is all mine or if they added more in because I said I would take it if they had it, but they do have it in smaller packs. So I have nine packs of liver. They cut the heart 
So I have two packs of heart, one tongue, which again, I'm trying really hard to use everything. And I heard, like, my husband and I both want to try the heart and the tongue. Because we hear it's like a delicacy. I just got to get past the fact that I have to peel a tongue. It's okay. We'll do it together. And as for the liver, I'm actually going to cut those into capsules so we can take liver capsules and I will bring you along for that as well. You can always get um, dried liver capsules to take for supplements, multivitamin, but I have liver right there and that's all it is. It's dried liver capsules. So I'm going to do like raw dried liver capsules. So I'm going to make capsules out of that liver soon. And then for our ground beef, I have 66. This is roughly because I couldn't get all the way down into the bottom, but 66 two pound packs of hamburger. So that is a lot of hamburger and I guarantee there's more in there than that. And then lastly, for meat, I had my rounds cut into steaks. So the round you can get made into hamburger, you can get made into roast, or you could get made into um, like your cubed steak. That is what the round is used for, mainly is for cubed steak. I, however, don't, we just don't eat that much cubed steak. And if I want cubed steak, I can just cube up some steak. So that's how I had these cut. I had them cut, which they are about this big. So a round steak is a good, like it could feed my family. So we got 10 round steaks and there is one steak in each pack. So I have 10 round steaks and those are going to be used for, again, if I want cube steak, I'll make it into cube steak. If I want it as a roast, I'll throw a couple in a crock pot and let it be a roast. I can cut it and make it stew meat if I want it to be stew meat. I can make any of those roasts stew meat. And that's another thing. You pay extra for the cube steak. You pay extra for patties. And you pay extra for stew meat. But honestly, I can just do it myself. And so I didn't pay the extra and I just had everything put in the more basic form. And then I can make it whatever I want later down the road. So that is... How much meat you get from a cow so here is it all in there and that's just a piece of bread so but we have the liver I have so how I have it set up I have the liver all right here and then we have all of the rib packs the heart and the tongue right here these are all soup bones all soup bones and then underneath all the soup bones I have all of our steaks on top and then underneath are all the roasts and then on this side is all the hamburger and it's just stacked right like this and then under here is all of the round steaks and the like flank steak and skirt steak and stuff like that, the oxtail, so that I know exactly where it is. So I really hope that this video helps you. When I first started wanting to buy my own meat, I wanted to know how much I was getting. And everything online and in the blogs, it's very, if you get a thousand pound cow, you get 60% of that and that's about you know what you get as far as meat and I'm like okay so how much <laughs> how much is that so that's what this video was I hope you enjoyed I hope it answered most of your questions again if not just leave a comment down below if you have not subscribed go ahead and hit subscribe so that you never miss anything and I will see you next time I'm in the kitchen cooking thanks for watching